You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Listen to more Magrito Podcast Network shows over at magrito.net. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook at Magrito. The Magrito Podcast Network. I think we're going live now. <laughs> What is up, Mind Buzz Universe? Amber just got into the studio. It's her first day to switch the cameras. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mind Buzz podcast, where we talk to all your favorite artists, your favorite podcasters, your favorite musicians, and your favorite comedians. My name is Gil, and working behind the scenes with the ones, twos, threes, four. And sometimes fives and six is Amber. What's going on? Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I don't think we have a Migrito Weekly. We don't. No. So I I, 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 I know, right? <laughs> Guess we don't have. So we don't know what's going on in Migrito this week. <laughs> we're kidding. We're kidding. Everyone deserves a break sometime. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Um, I guess, but, uh, if you're like me and Amber, we, there's no rest for the wicked, right, Amber? Yeah. Uh, so we had a couple of things going on over the past couple of days. Uh, was it Friday last? So last Friday, uh, we had one of our friends from the show, Harry Katz and the Pistachios. They did. Oh, it was on Saturday. Was it, uh, Saturday? Yes. Saturday or Friday? Saturday. Okay. Well, it was it was uh, Saturday. They did Artist in the Alley right here at, in downtown Pomona, and it was freaking cool. It was our first time out there. It was awesome. That was really cool. It was uh, fun. It was literally in an alley. Like it, the the backdrop was super cool. I was able to hold one of those "Oh Yes" signs, uh, <laughs> so I was uh, I was pretty fulfilled. <laughs> you fulfilled your your. Uh, no, I don't know. My hairy cat's uh, fantasy, fantasy, <laughs> if we want to say it, but um, that's the band's name, not his love for hairy cats. Yeah, <laughs> but other than that, uh, last night we hung out at uh, First Amendment Pizza Joint for the Monday Night Goofball, which uh, I did a spot there. Thank you. Gilberto Gibby Lopez uh, for that. And it was pretty cool. He does this open mic once a week, every Monday. It's completely free. Sign up start at 6.30 p.m. every Monday night, hosted by Gibby Lopez. The First Amendment, a pizza joint. And I wanted to give a quick shout out to all the comics that came out and did a spot. It was Kyle Patterson, Seven, uh, he he wrote. Uh, I don't know if that's the name of the person. I think it was seven seven. Okay, seven seven. Darby Cash, Owen Parker, Nick Lanny, Andrew Moncayo, Sean Dolan, Leo Vinny Vega, and Johnny Gold. Uh, met all you guys out there. Great set, good stuff last night, and we were just talking about how there's no hub. For open mics, for comedians, for musicians, for poets, there, there's no, there's nothing like that. So, me and Amber are gonna get our brains together, and hopefully, we can come up with something to use on the mindbuzz.org website. Yeah. You know, I like that. What do you think? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, from that, any anything else after that? Oh, uh, great pizza. What are you doing tonight? Huh. I said, what are you doing tonight? What am I doing tonight? Oh, yeah. Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tonight is the finals for the Soy Funny competition. I had no clue that we're, we're doing a competition. Um, you were just going there? I was just going out there to hang out with some cool peeps and uh, hopefully get a spot for the... 
the upcoming. Sergio says, hola, hambre, and Gil. We're not going to pay attention to the <laughs> chat today. We're, we're just not. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, we got the West Coast Pop Lock podcast presents the Soy Funny live stream comedy event with Jose and Sergio El Checo. That's going down tonight. So uh, I put the link in our link tree. Eight starts at 8 p.m. Hopefully these guys will have uh, everything ready by 8 p.m. It, it should be good. Uh, those guys at the West Coast Pop Lock podcast, you guys are members of the Maigrito family. Uh, so it, it's really cool. So I put the link down in the show description. You're going to see live comedy from about like six comics, including myself. So uh, should be a good time Sergio says you wanted comedy you got comedy check out the West Coast Pop Lock podcast starts tonight 8 p.m. the link is in the show description yeah. all right so without further ado let's get into our guest for this evening and today uh Octavio F G what is up my dude thanks for coming out bro I did man I did I made it Himself, the lady here, you know, the tens on fire. Oh, I know, I it's saw all, that. So it's all messed up. It's so all. What's going on with that? <laughs> Apparently, I guess I don't know. They, what I've been reading is that's arson. I think they said uh, it's arson. That's what they said. What? Yeah. But apparently it's a pallet factory. So a bunch of wood just stacked up. Oh, caught shoot. on fire. <laughs> and then, I mean, the, the basically like started melting the concrete and steel and that bridge. So they shut it. Usually it's something like really dumb. Like w when was it Universal Studios that that caught on fire their archives? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was like something dumb. Like somebody. Oh, what, you mean how it started? How it started? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm pretty sure it's it, something. I mean, one it, <laughs> probably one employee <laughs> out there was know he was getting canned. And he knew it was coming in. And or he wanted a couple of days off. <laughs> he wanted a couple of days off from the pallet factory. Like a cigarette on a mattress. I don't know. Something like Straight that. Straight up right? like 1950s style housewife. Yeah. He just walked away and threw it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I imagined it. No, but that's wild. It, so it's still going on? No, 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 no. It's it's done now, but it's just... All the cleanup and aftermath well, of all that? It, it, it literally peeled... It burned the concrete off of the post. Oh, Jeez. Shoot. So they can't let cars on it. They don't know if it's, mm. you know what I mean? It could fall. Yeah. So they got to rebuild. I don't know if they're going to rebuild it or what they're going to do. It's they said karma. Like six weeks, yeah. LA is going through it just like everywhere else. Oh. I, just, I just learned about the 10 freeway and how before they built. So they built the 10 freeway like in the 50s. Uh-huh. And they demolished like hundreds of homes of like um uh. Uh, black neighborhoods. Yep, well to do. Yeah, yeah. That that's. <laughs> I was reading about that, and they said that uh, it was. It's actually a big thing where it basically segregated the city mm -hmm. before there wasn't really a divide of so much of North LA, Central LA, South LA. It was just kind of just Los Angeles, and with the ten, it at least split kind of like railroad tracks. You know, yeah. so south of the ten was mm -hmm. predominantly black neighborhoods, and north of it was not. And before that, it was a very affluent area. And with the uh, the freeway going through there, it cut off cross traffic because then it becomes just exits, right? So it slows down people going back and forth, back and forth. It made it more of a divide. Yeah, that's crazy. That's uh, why I said it's karma. <laughs> it's karma for for them for building the 10 it? freeway. <laughs> for, for the it wasn't supposed to be there, so now <laughs> the ten as a person. Yeah. Oh, the ten freeway. <laughs> That's terrible. The 10 freeway is an asshole. The, the, I, <laughs> the I-5 is not. <laughs> the 710 is great. Yeah. <laughs> the 710. The 210 is nice, too. I like the 210. Oh, yeah. Who who was first, the 210 or the 10? Was it... The Mind Buzz is powered by Mind Buzz Media. Mind Buzz Media is an on-site video and audio podcast production company. Have you ever thought about starting your own video and audio podcast? Or do you have an existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Mind Buzz Media brings a professional podcast studio to you. Visit mindbuzz.org for more. 
The two... Wait, wait. Is the 210 go through Pasadena, Highland Park? Yeah. Yeah, that's Route 66. Yeah, Route 66. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That freeway is scary as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. When they made it, that freeway is only... You're only supposed to go 50 miles an hour max. It's the one that's Now we're going, going like, 80 miles an hour. It's like right a NASCAR through houses, track. right? Dude, yeah. I've noticed yeah. that even in uh, residential areas, people are driving fucking crazy right now. I have no clue what it is. It's, it's in the water. It's probably in the oxygen or something. People are just you're crazy. You're just old now. You're is it, old is man. it that? Yeah, my, 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 my wife, my wife just it? doesn't. My wife doesn't like driving between like two and five. You know, two and six because it just gets crazy. Yeah. yeah. People come from work and driving. Everyone's all impatient. Everyone's pissed off, and it's just. It turns into a whole different style of driving. Yeah. What What is it? The bit from George Carlin? Uh, anybody that's driving faster than you is crazy, but anybody <laughs> driving slower than you is uh, it's true. Is is uh, I don't know. I fucked it up. But um, <laughs> anybody driving slower than you is an idiot, but anybody driving faster than you is a maniac. Yeah. 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 Basically, that's what basically saying. how it feels. Yeah. Anyone right. who gets in your way, idiot. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> it's so true. That's why I felt that's why I felt coming here. Yeah. Just the freeway and then you start slowing down, slowing down. It just feels as if everyone's but, purposely on in your way. Yeah. But there's <laughs> nothing like I, I can't pinpoint the the what it's called, but on your way to Arizona, there's that freeway the freeway that we kept getting honked at and the guy It's a ten too. It's is it the ten? But yeah, it's the, a ten going to Arizona. Yeah, and yeah, people the ten, are like the ten goes all the way to, to like the other side of the country, it's, it goes through Texas and everything. People are going like a hundred miles an hour, and oh, if yeah. you're not, yeah, we're going like at speed limit, a little higher than speed limit, and we thought we were going good. And no, Arizona and Texas drives. <laughs> are crazy. They were like flipping us off, honking yeah. at yeah. us, and I'm like, is something hanging out of our back? Like, but you know what it was? It, we had a target on our car, anyways, because we have our California license plate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure they that sure. they thought our car was like an electric car or something because of how <laughs> slow we're going and how small it is. These guys were saying, uh, you look at these freaking Californians. That car is ran on marijuana. <laughs> I know it. It's ran on marijuana and good feelings. Yeah, marijuana, good vibes, yeah. and, and a recycled plastic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Arizona's very aware As we're of eating our Arizona. granola bars? As we're eating our vegan granola bars in our Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. No, no right. Starbucks. That happened to us, too. Like, when we, my older band, uh, we used to tour around... And when every time we'd go through Texas, we'd always get pulled over. Every time. California plates. Yeah. Van driving. Especially when I was driving. <laughs> I don't know why. One time we got pulled over and the cop says, first question is, is do you have any guns in the car? I was like, no, not at all. He's like, okay, well, get out of the car. And he says, he says, uh, I said, why well, I just asked him, why are you why are you pulling me over? And he said, This is the first time I heard this. He says, Well, you were your your right tire was touching the white line, you know, on the side of the road. What? So basically, it's like little things like that would happen all the time, just to kind of try to get something that happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we caught this, we caught that, we caught this. But Dang. luckily, no, no. But that always happened, almost hundred percent of the time in 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 uh, Texas and Arizona as well. Dang. Just not like here. <laughs> Is Texas the furthest you've uh, played? No, no, no. We've been, I've been you know, around the country. Really? Yeah. So like the East Coast, West Coast, uh, the South, the North, not too much. I mean, North. So tell, tell us what you do. do tell, tell our listeners what you do, Octavio. <laughs> on my, on my part time or just. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Hey, what would you say you do? Uh, musician, songwriter, singer. Uh, been in bands for not bands band in college and then from there i went to school at uc davis up north and then moved to the bay area where i got in a band started a band called the soft white 60s in san francisco and oakland and then that went for a while and that's the band that we toured all over the place in the country and then after that we moved down to uh los angeles in i think 2016 yeah 2016 2015 around there and then been down here ever since and just been doing my kind of solo music since then. So that's what brought me here and everything. And then my wife's on here, had a baby down here. Well, no, my baby was born in Vancouver. Uh, but yeah, so that's what that brought me down here. So you were originally from up north? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Near Sacramento. Oh, okay. A town called Woodland. 
tiny Woodland. little town. Actually, remember, it's like, you know, little town off the freeway, all agriculture, fields. Okay. You know. so, something like Chino then. Yeah. 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 It did. yeah I was just going to say that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly the same. So it's funny. So if you drive east of Los Angeles, it starts feeling more like that. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of everything more spread out. Yeah. California has everything. Like in the spot that we're at, mm-hmm. we go 30 minutes west, we hit downtown LA, but you go east and we hit mountains and Well, you guys, where you guys are especially. Yeah. Chino, you know. But I mean, for where I am, in South LA, I mean, same thing. It's that the ocean yeah, is, exactly. you know, 15 minutes that way, west, and then ah, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and then your mountains. And that's California, huh? All the way up and down the coast. Yeah. You can yeah. go to the desert. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we have everything. I've talked to people, you know, it's like, oh, California, California. Like, Man, trust me. Go go drive around. <laughs> go go to other states. Go check it out. And I'm not saying I need to say other states have great things, anything, but there's nothing close at all. No. As far as food goes, as far as climate goes, as far as what you can do on the weekends, what's available. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's not even, not close at all. There's, there's nothing close to it. No. We're we're paying for luxury. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like, well, it's like, why is rent so expensive? You're like, well, I mean, have you been around? <laughs> it's like anywhere. You it's know? even like, you like when people, get in. Yeah. <laughs> when right? people complain yeah. about um, like homelessness. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, well, if I was homeless, like, of course I don't want to be in California. It's fucking warm. I can go and be yeah. by the beach. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be homeless in the Midwest when it's like, you know, snowing. Well, I think that's why that uh, California has such an influx of uh Un, unhoused because of the I environment. So. I think so. I think so. I also think that I don't know. Well, the weird thing is when we when I was living in Vancouver, Canada, I realized that they they have they're one of the first cities, or what are they? The province, their provinces the, uh, that legalized fentanyl. Oh sure. So. Whoa! The, when when was this? So a while back. Yeah. A while back, I'm not exactly, but mm. I know that. It was in a way to wean people off heroin, but then people are more, then you get become dependent on fentanyl, right? Yeah. So there's an area in Vancouver, Vancouver's immaculate. I mean, it's, it's almost too clean. Like it's, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's immaculate. It's a strangely it's a, it's clean. It's a beautiful city, uh-huh. you know, and then, but there's one part of town called Gastown and you go down there and it's just, it's, they contain it kind of like the Tenderloin in San Francisco. You know, oh, okay, you know, yeah. like Skid Row, where yeah. we stayed. Yeah, where oh, so you guys stayed in Tenderloin. <laughs> yeah. I booked. <laughs> I booked a hotel. On Amber accident. is out the Mind Buzz uh, <laughs> travel agent. <laughs> How about the Tenderloin? I that sounds know. nice. I didn't. <laughs> it sounds like a good piece of meat. So no, I was like, you holiday, know, <laughs> holiday in Tenderloin. <laughs> no, it was a really nice hotel like it was not cheap to stay there it was not that city's not cheap in general to stay yeah in at all. so i was like oh no this way. is nice your car get broken into no no, no we we paid yeah we forked up the the cash to yeah, to have it have, to. have it have stored to. in a parking structure but we yeah. didn't go anywhere we went from there to our yeah. car and then we went to the rest of the city but yeah, we, we i mean we stopped by a liquor store that was on the corner but yeah i mean that was it. it that was in daylight and then i started like <laughs> like looking up the tenderloin and i was like oh my god gilbert i was like it's got yeah. a history where but see i grew up in paramount next to compton so i, I was like well, all right yeah it's a little different though because it, it's, it is it's, a little different and i'll say but... that too you know because even in vancouver is a when people are on fentanyl, and I think, you know, you kind of get the zombie feeling, yeah. you know, there's this kind of like, it, it, like someone's like crack, it's, they're moving around, they're pacing, but they're like working, you know, yeah. they're like, they got to get things done. They're moving, they're moving, they're moving. They're like, they don't want nothing to do with you. They're like trying to find something. They're working, they're moving around, but heroin, they're just like frozen and it's kind of zombie apop- apocalyptic like. Yeah. So it's a different feeling. You know, any, it's, any type of opiate, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that would yeah. Yeah, do just, that to a person. They're just sitting there. <laughs> I, told, I told my wife that I was driving, and it's like you see someone kind of curled up, kind of like, you know how it looks like they're being held up like a string. You're mm. like, how is that person that standing? Sense. And I think to myself, I'm like, 
how good does that feel? <laughs> like, how, like, what are they feeling right now? And I bet you it's completely opposite of what it looks like. Yeah. Because they're completely comfortable in that moment. That's true. You know what I mean? They're just sitting in there just like, ooh. <laughs> you know, I, just, I was like, it looks horrible. And it's just, but I, I it's, they definitely look more comfortable than someone or like a cracker just pacing around. Yeah. You know, and jittery and looking around and searching and looking frantic. It's like they're just happy standing in that one spot. <laughs> like, yeah, I wonder I wonder going, how I wonder how that that what's that feels. going through their yeah, mind. Yeah, what, what in their mind what they're, they're like feeling, what's going on? In a field of daisies and yeah. I mean, it's the gotta feel sky great. is great and then right there they're just like hunched yeah. over. <laughs> it's got I mean it's it's worth right. a lot to people, you know, so yeah. it's like it's gotta be gotta be it's it's like <laughs> how how can one person like how good can it be right like how how great can it feel when you yeah when when you're able to give up your entire life your your identity That's what I'm saying. your bill your your being everything for this for that for that substance yeah that's what i'm saying it's it's wild it's i mean the power of it's incredible yeah you know it's a you know it's like just <laughs> it's like you just spend your life on quests yeah you know just to achieve the next one and you get it it's like bing your meter goes up you're full and then you have to spend the next few days like on side quests trying to find <laughs> more things and more things you can accumulate it again and go again and go again well i wonder what like if if fentanyl is the same thing like any other drug, because you know how what they say about when when you first try a drug, like mm-hmm. the first time, you're always trying to reach that first time you've ever felt it. Right. Like with fentanyl, is it like every time is like that, or or is it the same concept? You're trying to get that. I first. know from what I, I I feel like I mean, from what I've read. Is that that's how a lot of people overdose if they haven't done it for a while when they relapse because they Mm. go to their old dose Mm. and their body can't handle it anymore. Yeah. So it is, it is, you do, you do build a tolerance to it, you know, so you need more, more, more. I mean, just look at anything. Drinking is the same thing. Right. True. You know, it's like before, you know, it goes up, then it goes up, then it goes up. And then I think that's why a lot of people go try to do the same thing they used to do. And just, it's way too much. Yeah. Way too much, and I guess fentanyl is even stronger. You know, it's it's, it's so, you know, uh, synthetic. I guess. So right now, Vancouver has all drugs uh, decriminalized, right? I don't. I don't know. Can, you, can you look it up, Amber? Sure. When we were there, I know you could. I How long ago was this? By the this way, this was a year, year and a half. My daughter's one. said a year and a half ago. And oh, so uh, this is recent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So through the pandemic, um, prior to all that, yeah, we're up there. My wife was filming a show, and so we all moved up there, and we were there for two. She was there for four years, and we were there all together like two years because the borders started closing. Mm. So it was like, look, if you don't come up here, you might not be able to get to get get up. And I, a good thing I did because they did close the borders, and it got really strict. Uh, but- what does it say? Health uh, Health Canada granted an exception under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act to provide to the oh province. to the province. Yeah, of see, so BC. it's just a fine. It's it doesn't go on your record or anything. It's it's like a citation. Mm. So from January thirty first, twenty twenty three, until January thirty first, twenty twenty six, adults and BC are not subject to criminal charges for personal possession of small amounts of certain illegal drugs. Yeah. And I know they just... So it's decriminalized. Yeah. And I I know they for sure, kind of the same way marijuana exists in California. Right. Right. Is it legal on a federal level? No, but state level. Yeah. You know, they have, uh, I know they legalize psilocybin. uh, Certain cities in in California. Yeah. In Vancouver, you can walk right in. Really? Yeah, buy a mushroom like you can buy a cookie. They have mushroom yeah, spots yeah, in yeah, Vancouver? Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. You it's can buy probably the... Like the, chocolates, you know? That's cool. I think the the kind of also the thinking behind it is like Italy, right? Where they were saying like Italy has a really low um, 
like percentage of people that are alcoholics mm -hmm. even though you think like oh italians drink wine you know but they're saying that that there's a low percentage of in youth okay i'm gonna let me reiterate yeah, yeah, in yeah. youth because um the youth get to drink i think i think the drinking age is like 15 and oh, and they make whoa. it they make it so um like like non-taboo uh -huh. within families within the culture you know you can serve your 15 year old a glass of wine with you know their dinner so they start normalizing it in a sense of not binging it's more of a I'm going to enjoy it. It's going to be with family. It's going to be things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, it's not hidden. Yeah. yeah. So it's not it, some, you got to wait to do this. You yes. can't handle it. So then they don't binge and they don't become these raging alcoholics right. because it's never been like taboo or stopped or looked down on. So maybe that what Canada is doing is trying to decriminalize so. it so that it doesn't become this like, let me get it, let me get it because it's wrong. Well, I think they're trying to also, you know, realize that, okay, if you're doing this, there's some other stuff going on. Yeah. So let's try to figure that out. Like putting you in jail is not going to fix anything. No. If anything, you're going to come out with more of a habit. Yeah. Right. You know, so it's, 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 but again, people always forget that Vancouver population is tiny compared to like something in like Los Angeles. Yeah. So when people say, well, Vancouver, this works, it's like, there's no, there's not that many people there. It's completely different. Mm. You know what I mean? You try to keep to what's in Los Angeles. How many million people? Nine million? Tenly people. I mean, Vancouver is tiny compared to that. So you look at their programs and you're like, oh, we should try that here. It's, I mean, the amount of money and not that, just like the amount of people that Los Angeles has to work with. It's incredible. And that's another thing. Like if you drive around the country, very few people in this country know how big Los Angeles really is. It's huge. It's huge, man. It's, it's so big. It's it, it goes forever. It goes forever. Yeah. Just, I mean, you can see it when you fly in. It's just all gridded out and just tons. Of, like I just picture my little house down there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> man, nothing down there. <laughs> what what is the population of Los Angeles? Can you can you look that up? I say nine. I you said nine so. Million? Your your bid was nine million. Yeah, I, I I thought it was. Maybe I'm way off. Population. Oh, that's Canada's. 38 population. No, see, I was way off. 3.8. Okay, 3 .8. so 3.9 million. 3 .9 it's about million. Four, 4 million. Okay, so 4 million, right? But this is 2021. Okay, oh, so maybe. Okay, hold on. We had some people come in Um, 2023. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, so a little bit. Almost 4 million, right? Okay, so 4 million. And then you well, said 4 up. million in like two years? That's crazy. Look, Vancouver. And Vancouver? So we got four million. One hundred and ninety-two. No, that's, no, that's well, Washington. Oh, that's, There's another one up there. Oh, okay, Do yeah, Vancouver, yeah. BC. Let me see. British Columbia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right here. Good food up there. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, look, six hundred thousand. No, that's two thousand seventeen. Why is it giving me dates that are not? <laughs> Your prior searches. There you go. Two million. The current. Two million. Metro. Oh man, see, it blew up. Yeah, it says it had a, a increase since 2022. Yeah, that's a, a that's big, a big jump, huge jump. It's a big increase. How do they dude. do that? It doesn't even feel like there's that many people there. At six, like six o'clock at night, it's so quiet there. Really? Yeah, it's probably going, the culture too. I was going like crazy. The, the people living there. <laughs> oh man, what was the the nightlife Not like? My vibe. No, no, man. <laughs> no. It's a it's 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 a town of you know beautiful. But if if your nightlife's your thing, I mean, you probably have one night Saturday. Really? Yeah, and even that, I mean, it, it's just there's one little street where they have some clubs that goes late to like four a.m. They serve alcohol to about two a.m. But you can, but you you know, they stay open till four. But that's a very small little portion, you know, because the uh, there's a university there, UBC. But I mean, look at it. It looks like a few. When you're there, you feel like you're a Minority Report. <laughs> why is that because it's just like you when you're in these little condos and up there you just feel it's all glass and it just it's like a big fish tank you just feel like something's gonna fly by your window it's so futuristic mm. feeling mm. Okay. i'm selling it huh yeah you I'm are like, yeah you want to go to the future i'm buying my vancouver <laughs> i'm buying my tickets tonight dude <laughs> no it is it just wasn't for me in the sense i mean the food's incredible um the chicken is like, you go, that's the funny thing. You go up there and you realize the difference in uh, certification for foods here. 
You know what I mean? It looks different there. The carrots mm. aren't huge. You know, the chickens aren't like huge chicken breasts. It's like you realize like what's yeah. modified and what's not because they have stricter codes. Okay, I you see. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you go to a store, you're like, oh, wow. Oh, These okay. are the real size yeah, of chickens. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I could see this alive. Yeah. You know, some of them were foster farm chicken, big old two pound breasts. Big two pound breasts. <laughs> yeah, that chicken's not walking anyway. Big old anyway. thighs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> carrots. <laughs> yeah. Regular size carrots. Okay. Yeah, everything. So, but it's, I mean, it's beautiful, but it just, the hard part for me being in music up there was that I would try to find shows and, say, and you really have about one day a week where that's happening. So, oh, sure. you know, so, I mean, you know, in, in LA, same thing, you know, there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm-hmm. you know, and each night has its own thing, you know, and it's. Up there, it was hard because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday, it's it's, just, it's so quiet. So I'd get kind of just crazy at night. Like it'd be four, like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and then it's just quiet. How was the saturation of like artists up in Vancouver? There's, there's a good amount there. It was a good from, amount. From what I could tell. But it was just, you know, the hard part was it was hard to meet people there. It could, because as a culture itself, and I've heard this from other Canadians that, as a culture, it's more uh, standoffish than, than the East Coast. Mm. So people are like, oh, if you go to Toronto, if you go to Montreal, it's like it's a whole different vibe because the influx of the kind of immigrants that they have there compared to the West Coast, it's different culturally. Mm. You know, so it's a d- big, big difference. And they're like, oh, no, like nightlife, music, does that like on the East Coast is a lot different. But – it, it just, it, it, I guess you could find some artists out there. I had a hard time finding it. I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. Couldn't, you know, like, you want to do something in LA any night, you can find it. Yeah. Easily. We're spoiled, see? Yeah. You know, I mean, most, I mean, there's, there's not many cities like that. No. No, not even the next county. Like right now we're in, we're in SB County. Right. Right. And even around here, people I are go going. crazy out here. People are going to downtown LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, yeah, you have to. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, but you're, I mean, pretty fortunate, you know? I mean, that's, I mean, it depends what you want to do. I mean, that's why for me, where I got into music up north, the closest city to me was 90 miles away, and that was San Francisco and Oakland. So it was either that or Sacramento. And at that time, Sacramento had a good music. I mean, they, they went through waves. In like the early 90s, Sacramento had a big music scene. Uh, but then... When I was getting into music, starting into music, I moved to the Bay Area because that was kind of like the closest area where, you know, shows were happening Monday, seven days a week. What was San Francisco like in the 90s, dude? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't there in the 90s, no. but everybody, I, no, I moved to San Francisco in 2009, oh. 2010. It's uh, got to be different than now, right? No, everyone I talked to, though, that was from San Francisco, they loved it in the 90s. That's when it probably had more music venues than anything. Yeah. Tons of DJs, tons of music. I mean, I think it, I think when I was there, we kind of, we kind of, our band kind of jumped ship right before like the tech thing fell out and Mm. like how it is right now. I mean, right now it's, it's sad to see. I mean, it's weird. It's weird how, yeah, all the places that have shut down, all the venues that have shut down, uh, a lot of people have left, you know, because after the work from home thing. Mm-hmm. For all the tech world, a lot of those people didn't come back. Really? Yeah, they just stayed. You know, if it's if you can work from home, you might as well move to a, another little city that you can. Your money goes further. Yeah, yeah. or move like to Mexico or something. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. You could do it every right month. over yeah. the border. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like it's, and it's it's. I mean, it, I, I feel like you're. You guys went to the only part of the city that wasn't affected was the tenderloin. <laughs> <laughs> right. That stayed the same. A, <laughs> impervious to change. The tenderloin. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I feel that's what they you guys say. ever need a booking agent I, like, I got a good one over like, here there for it you. Is, the hey but we loin. made it yeah yeah we made it everything spins around the tenderloin it just yeah. stays it was nice yeah those guys can, <laughs> they, I, they can put up with anything <laughs> right yeah uh so your music man like mm-hmm. ten, we were watching one of your videos before you got in and it's so cool it's really thank good you. you're a very good musician i appreciate it thank you very good artist do, do you so do you like uh, being called a musician an artist uh, like what tell me about that what, what do you think you are <laughs> <laughs> i think i think artist is a better word when someone else uses it mm-hmm. 
But to call yourself an artist, I think, is always has some kind of pretentiousness to yeah. it. You know, like, uh, okay. I'm an artist. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, because I think, I mean, to me, there's a lot of people that are artists. I mean, I think, I think people that cook and that chefs are artists. Yeah. You know, some things that you're working with that's constantly evolving and changing and you can shape it and you kind of have to decide when it's done. You know, it's like, when, when, when is it done? When do you stop adding things? When do you stop doing it? Because it's your perception of, of what you think is good. It's like, oh no, this is how I like it. Well, your perception of good for your music is fucking fantastic. Thank dude. you. You know, that's, I guess that's a developing over time, you know, of what I think is good. What was your first uh, instrument that you picked up? Uh, my mom enrolled my brother and I in piano, which I did not like at all. It was horrible. I did not like it at all. My brother was very good at it. Um, Is your brother still in music? No, no, he's no. Uh, he's no, he went completely different. He's an athlete, engineer. Now he's like a CEO. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So uh, he. It's interesting that he really took the piano and he did it well. And I didn't, I liked music, but the, the thing is I didn't like about the lessons was how rigid it was. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it just wasn't fun. It just mm. was, it was so, it just, it was so strict. It was work. Yeah. It was I, work. And I think, honestly, I think it was the type of teaching, you know, teaching changes over time. You know, how I introduce an instrument to a child depends on whether, you know, they might take to it. You know, as opposed to, no, you do this or no, just bang the hell out of it. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, okay, you know, this is it? Yes. So I took, uh, and then I started uh, playing guitar. That was it first. And and I started playing guitar so I could sing. I always just like singing. So I was like, well, my dad had a guitar. And so I would play, uh, he would play, I remember he'd play uh, like Richie Valen songs on it. Uh, some doo-wop songs. Uh, he knew four chords. So every song you played was with, the, was with, with those four <laughs> chords. And one time I was like, Papi, I was like, why is every song you play with those chords? He goes, Mijo, I didn't write the songs. He's like, <laughs> he's like that's, just, that's just how they are, Mijo. He's like, you could ask me about this. He's like, I'm just playing them. I was like, all right, fine. Because <laughs> I wanted to learn other chords and I was like, they're all the same. He's like, don't get mad at me. Get mad at Richie Valens. I didn't write them. <laughs> So that's all that started. And then, uh, then just that kind of took and it just, when I went to college, I started a band almost immediately. A friend of mine lived now, one of my good friends lived down the hall from me and I walked by his room and he had a, a guitar in his room and I asked him, I was like, well, you want to like play guitar together? And he's like, yeah. And so I just started writing songs and we started open mics and then that happened. That started a band. And then from there I went to the Bay area to get, kind of get, what year was this? Shit, I was in college 2002. I was in college for six years. Okay. Took a little bit from yeah? me. <laughs> I'm still in college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going through it. it was, yeah. <laughs> you're a couple uh, feet uh, in front of us, so you're good. <laughs> yeah, no, I was there. And it's so 2002, 2000, no, 2002, 2003. And then I was six, seven, eight. It's 2008. Graduated in 2009. It took me a while because I remember I got I got booted out of college for a quarter because my I went on academic probation twice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they had to send me an email saying if you don't respond to this email, we're going to disenroll you, which I didn't get. So mm -hmm. I was in class, <laughs> and this is how much I wasn't taking it seriously at the time. <laughs> I was in a class that I found out was the second time I'd taken it. I, I was I was doing the work and I was like, man, this is I, I just I, got this I just know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I go online and look. I go, wait, I've taken this class before. Oh, and so shit. I go online and check my grade, and there's no classes listed on the site. I'm like, what? Nothing listed. Nothing listed. Nothing listed. Now, mind you, I'd have been going this 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 quarter for like three weeks, right? Four weeks. And so I go to my counselor. They're like, no, like you didn't respond to the email. So we disenrolled you. <laughs> Jeez. Like, so... Oh, but it was good. It happened because then after that, I was like, okay, you got to decide whether you're going to finish or not. Yeah. And then after that, I finished. So when you, when you first started your first band in college, what were some of your, your inspirations? Like what was going on musically at that time? Like for you? Um, in your group? 
in college, I got into, uh, in college, I was into, I got really classic kind of college thing, got into like big singer songwriters. You know, I was listening to Nick Drake. I was listening to Ryan Adams. I was listening to uh, M. Ward. Uh, a lot of, you know, just kind of acoustic, intimate kind of folk, I guess, indie okay. folk kind of stuff. And then I was also, at the same time, I got really into Oasis, you know, rock and roll band. And I Oh, was dude, like, I was just listening to their Mor- Morning Glory album. Oh, yeah, the album Morning Glory? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's fucking amazing. The, fir- the first two albums, th- three albums they have are incredible. They're great. And so I went down a huge hole of Oasis, uh, a big hole of James Brown. Uh, there's a few artists where I really went, where I listened to them, and then I went backwards. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like some artists I listen to. It's, it what, do you goes, mean? what do you mean? To well, walk me through that. Like, if, if you know, so I would hear, uh, so take Oasis. So I hear Wonderwall. I hear, you know, the songs everybody hears. Wonderwall, Don't Look Back in Anger. Mm-hmm. Um, I hear these songs. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Then I see them, pictures of them. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And I liked, I liked how honest they were brash. They weren't afraid to say they didn't like anything, which I thought was Oh, that's great, because what's funny is you get behind closed doors and bands talk like that. Mm-hmm. But when you get out in the, in the open, bands are just like, oh, no, they're cool, they're cool. And you get behind doors, and some bands are like, oh, fucking band sucks. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, there's, there, you do have opinions. Yeah. You know, everybody does. It's not like you're guilty of anything. Um, but what I'm saying, when I got into them, then I found like, oh... So the guitarist, Noel Gallagher, was a big fan of the Smiths because he liked Johnny Marr. So then I got into the Smiths and then Johnny Marr, and then I found out, okay, now that le- then that also takes you to the Stone Roses. You know, and then Stone Roses, so you find out their band and then the band that they're influenced by, and you start listening to that band, and you find out that band and find out what they're influenced by, and it goes backwards. Oh, you okay, what that's, what, that's what you mean by going backwards. Yeah, yeah, so it's okay. like I got into James Brown. You know, and then James Brown, not going backwards, but I mean, he leads to all these other people, you know, like Bootsy Collins, uh, Catfish, these bassist, bass players, you know, he, Jimi Hendrix, uh, then Little Richard, you know, I'm just saying all these artists are like kind of trees. Yeah. You know, and there's some artists that were big trees in my life where they kind of went, they're the parts and every, and I found little things off them. So like Oasis, with, you know, uh, James Brown, um, uh, not Sam Cook. Is it uh, Sam Cook? Yeah, Sam Cook. I got into for a while. Uh, Smokey Robinson's another one that I love. Uh, you know, they kind of lead you into other things. Yeah, because I start reading about them and I find out, oh, they're really into this. Really oh, yeah, that. this person was influenced by this yes, person. This person was exactly. influenced by this person. Wait, this song is a uh, it's a cover. So yeah. let me let me go exactly. back and and see who the original person that exactly. sang this song. Exactly. And what the cool part about that is that. What's interesting is I find that if you go backwards with an artist, it makes them a little bit more human because you can see where they pulled from. You know, you yeah. can see where they got that inflection from, or you can see where they got, and you realize like, oh, like every everybody does that. You along the way, you just collect things. Yeah, you know. But I'm saying you get influence. Yes, exactly. So yeah. I I really like when I find artists I really like. I, it, I enjoy finding their influences. Because it's 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 I'm like oh well that's cool they, they picked that out of there, or they picked that out of there oh that oh once you find the influence you listen it's like oh my god that song completely takes that, you know so there that's that's what I'm about like going backwards, oh so there's a few few it's good concept like, yeah a few people like that that I would get into and I'd imagine with comedy same thing right yeah definitely who would be your com- comedians you, you kind of like right well, right well, now I'm I'm. I'm very into uh, Rodney Dangerfield right now, oh, and really? he's a branch. He he's he's one he's of the major ju- brands. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right? I think so, he's, it, it's his style, uh, his setup punch, setup punch, one liner comics are are. That's what I'm. I'm. So would you say Mitch Hedberg's off that brand, off that tree too? Probably. Right. Yeah. Mitch Hedberg's on there. Um, no, because I think that like I'm going backwards too. Same thing. With yeah. The, uh, with uh, the Sam Kinison and, right. and all those guys like back in the early days. Hollywood comedy store scene. Yeah. I just watched, I don't know if you see it. It's, uh, I watch a lot of documentaries. Okay. And, and a lot of them, musicians or, or uh, 
artists, you know, painters or, and there's a lot of, I watch a lot of them on comedians and it's interesting how a lot of, <laughs> a lot of those comedians that I found, like it all kind of goes back to like Los Angeles comedy store. Yeah. Which I know was crazy weird to think that they all kind of went through there somehow through all Everybody the did. Every Roseanne went there. Uh, who, what was the other one that I, we were just See, watching? That's so weird. That's nothing. That's not with music. No. Not, you don't think not so? like a venue where it's like, oh man. Oh, you like know? a venue, like yeah, a one place wish, that people went to. I wish that you could go because it'd be cool to be, you know, in a place where, you know, that there's so many bands that are there, even if they're not playing, they're just hanging around. You oh, know? okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's that's maybe at times, I guess that's how you develop. That's how you describe a scene. Yeah, like a place that everybody goes hang because that's like at least what I'm very very fairly new right to to the comedy scene right now fairly how, new how long would you say you've been doing comedy uh what would you say amber what like if you were to judge and somebody asked you how long has gil been doing comedy what would you tell them um like real comedy no, just <laughs> <laughs> real comedy no years <laughs> zero are we talking are we talking <laughs> real comedy or fake comedy <laughs> which one is it <laughs> Which one? Sorry, what are you talking that's not about? What I, um, well, wait, I gave her the setup, so it's fine. Well, I'm glad you, you took hold it. Hold on, hold on. Let me phrase this way: When was the first time that you knew you're going to do comedy? You picked a date, you're going to do it. You prepped, and you were ready to go for that. I was kind of thrown. I was kind of thrown. What, like two months ago? When did? Uh, I would say maybe in total, like that. It was like brewing and everything. No, I would say like longer than that. maybe six months yeah. because you've been talking about it. I mean. I know that you've always had the idea and, and you've, you've I've been emulated. writing for two years. Even when he was a kid, he was like yeah. funny and doing oh, skits so see, that's and doing then. stuff like that. So you're writing prior to doing stand-up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've I've wrote for about a year and a half to close to two years of material. I have like something like 30 pages of just material that I've wrote over and So are two most, years. Are most stuff you write, is it all very in like the Rodney Dangerfield vein where you like uh, not I'm saying doing the same thing but I'm saying the same kind of quick one liner delivery hook you know punch in the next next one so I'm figuring that out when I go on stage like what am, am I a storyteller do I tell good stories is it just a set up punches right like right. I, all that is happening on stage right now I'm completely new at it so i even the delivery it, it's changing it's evolving and i feel that if i'm if i keep working at it keep working at my material uh -huh. then i'm gonna find what works best for me right so you're 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 kind of you're finding your voice I'm finding it i'm right. finding my style but what if let me ask you this what if because I, I this is a thing that i've experienced in music mm -hmm. is that what if something goes over well but doesn't feel good to you yeah like has has anything has anything ever landed where it landed better than you thought and you're like i didn't think that was gonna work like that so does that convince you to do it again yeah i think so like, if it works it works if, right, if right, it yeah, gets yeah, a yeah. laugh yeah it gets a laugh in the way that you did it i think i i'm still fairly new to where if i get a laugh fuck yeah that's a win yeah, so i'm gonna yeah, try i'm gonna try it the I next time <laughs> i'm gonna try I, it the I next swear. time it's so much people, even when people say, like, oh, it's a funny person. It's, it's that it's so much different to be funny when people are expecting it. Yeah. And paid to hear you be funny. It's different to be in a room and be spontaneous and to say something funny. That's completely different than going in a room, standing on a microphone. Yep. And that's where I, I, I really do believe that to me, that is the most courageous form of like entertainment that I think. I agree. There's okay. nothing like you can go to open mic and you at least, you know, physically you have a guitar on your lap. It's like you have this wall between you. Mm. You know what I mean? Even if I'm not playing, if, yeah. if I forgot a lyric, when I first started playing, I forgot a lyric. You just play longer. You're going to use those four chords. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm going into Richie Valens. You know? <laughs> and, it, and it's like, you know, no one knows. You can kind of jam. You can you can keep it going a little bit. So you kind of like, OK, there I am. Whereas with comedy, is it if you stop? I mean, it's. Whoosh, yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about this last night, and then also Jose, uh, he's the one doing the the Soy Funny competition. He this one tonight, in the, yeah, the one the one tonight. Uh, it's energy. Like from what I heard from him, is just it's the energy of the room that you need to act, you need to hold, 
or you need to move yep. it around. Yep. And yep. I'm finding that now after doing, uh, going on stage for the past couple of months is that's exactly what it is. Yeah, and and it's I, hard. And it, it, it's difficult to to it's, get people's attention and yep. keep their attention. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I would do the same thing with music. You can have their attention for two minutes, but once you stop and you stop that energy, it just fucking falls. <laughs> and it's hard to... You can't get it back. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, you can. There, there's ways to do it, but your shit has to be really good. Yeah, it, it, it's also the same thing with the same thing with music. Because I tell people, you know, if whether you believe or not, I'm not talking about crystals and flower remedies or uh, you know superstition things and everything but i'm saying if someone doesn't believe in energy have them go in front of a room and perform yep. oh i'm telling you, it okay. is undeniable what okay. you feel you can feel when it's with you and you feel that you're you know it's like oh shoot i can't i can't like it's just if it get, makes you it fires you up you get even more energy and more freedom and then you can it, when it's not there you can just feel it leave and it's like, whoosh, yeah, it like, goes quick. Yeah. And it's like, oh, as no. quick it, as it gets to you, it, it leaves, it can just leave just like that. I've thought about the comedy. I really, I'm really impressed by it. I'm really intrigued by it. Cause I think I also really like com- comedy and comedians a lot too, because I think that they're people that observe a lot. It's fun. Yeah. yeah you know, but you have to observe people. I, I observe and I, the way that my brain is starting to work now is to <laughs> always look for the funny and e- even though how dark a thing might be or yeah, situation yeah, yeah. or it, do you have to think like there's something funny out of everything? There like, is too. There is. There is. There really is. I mean, you just got to find it. Yeah. It's, it is interesting how... Even even with something traumatic or something happens, you know, in in a few years or years later, you can joke about it and you can laugh about it because you find things in it that are funny. Yeah. And I feel that, I guess, comedians can have the ability to get to that point quick. Yeah. You know, kind of find it very fast. Have you seen that video? There's a video of uh, Ralphie May uh, doing a, uh, he gives kind of a lecture. I would call it a lecture because he's not doing stand up. He's ta- he's lecturing on stand up at the comedy store. It's on YouTube. I think I watched it. It's like uh, Ralphie Mae's like master uh, yeah, mastering like, stand up. Yeah, I just ran randomly. Yeah. It was cool for me to hear him talk because I just thought not even doing com- not being a comedian, but I just like to understand people's process. Yeah, you know, and it's it, it is interesting. It's all I mean, it's very similar to music too. You know, it's like you. It, you do have to learn how to get a room, keep a room, work room, you know, and develop an arc. Yeah. You know, a, a live show is. A live show is that. You know what I mean? It's not fragmented. Like you may be telling, there may be 10, 11 songs on the set, but as a whole, it's one piece. Yeah. And it's very choreographed. It's very, chore- and this is what I'm starting to learn now. It's very choreographed. Your material is choreographed, but you have to make it, look like it's not like it, you're <laughs> Sometimes just i think i think about that i think about that when i watch right? when i watch some people's sets it's like wait because i've seen interviews with comedians and and i guess it's similar with i'm trying to transfer it to like music as well with mm-hmm. lyrics is that you can fuss over what the last word you're going to say is right what makes it funnier Right. You know, and to remember that like, oh no, well, I said this the other night at Imagine the Comedy. It's like in okay, try that again. And yeah. you, it's it's weird to watch a comedian. I sometimes I think about I was like, wait, is that is that pause planned? Right. You know, is that part of the joke? Like it, it, does the joke work without yeah. the pause? But it shouldn't. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's weird to me to, to think. You know, it's a performance. You know, they're yeah. literally that they're the pauses are there. It's so hard. And it, it's yeah, so it's, hard. it's, it's think, crazy. Uh, I'm in awe of it. Performing I, I, it's so in impressive. general, like I, I, I can't even think of myself going, you know, and performing anything. But it, performing in general, I think it's like it's beautiful because there's this art of vulnerability. Whether you do music, whether you're yeah. an actual, you know, yeah. painting artist, you're someone sculpting, you're, you know. Um, a comedian whether you're doing like a live cooking show anything that you know we we would deem as art is it's it's being vulnerable it's showing who you are in a sense through your art and then to 
still want people to reciprocate to that, it's hard. Like, it's, it's, I, I can't imagine doing it. It's, really it's, it's also hard, too, because really what you're doing is basically saying you're giving it to people mm-hmm. to judge it. Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, that's what comedy is. You're giving, you're, you're immediately being judged. Yeah. You know, laugh or no laugh. Like, that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> direct feedback. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if that works or not, it's immediate feedback. At least with music, I could make an album or a song, put it out, and I'm not necessarily in the room as everybody's listening to it. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? It'd be yeah. different. You know, it's, it's, it's every person that, I, that would hear my music would be, the equivalent would be me being in the room, like playing it for them and just watching their reaction. You know, with comedy, you're with comedy, you're there. You're, you, you're, you're, and the thing is, you have to be there. Yeah, you you have to do it. You, you, so when, when you go on stage, right, mm-hmm. you, you have to do it on stage. Like, there's no stand-up comedy without going in front of the yeah. crowd. Yes, yeah. Sure. You can't do stand-up comedy on a podcast. I mean, you can. I mean, that basically, that's what we're going to do tonight. Right. But consistently, like, you can't be a stand-up comedy while on a podcast, if, if that makes sense. I think, I think that that's... You know what I, I mean? Th- I, but I think that that's where the comedy world, in a way, is kind of, like, finding its floor Yeah. in that. Because now you have people coming from podcasts that now build a following you well that I feel like then go live. Right? True. As opposed to people starting. That's what that's actually happening a lot, right, Amber? That's happening a lot with um influencers. Like yeah. w- with uh Instagram influencers, uh YouTubers. Yeah, they the, kind of build kids. something first, right? Yeah. yeah. And they've been building it for over a decade and they go into stand up comedy. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they just post funny videos and it Fun. works and it works and it works. And right. They're like, oh, I'll do this more of this. Yeah, but it's so different. Like, it's so, you can't, like, s- sketch comedy is sketch comedy versus stand-up comedy. Right. Because improv is totally different. Like, improv comedy is different from stand-up. Like, you don't, there's no crutch when you're on the stage by yourself no, versus I've, when you have I've, a full improv team. I've, yeah. Or a sketch team. And I've, I, but I've talked to this about, uh, some of my friends I've talked about this because with music, and I think it's interesting, especially with TikTok, is that it's different to put something out there when you've curated it and made it exactly how you want it to be and then send it out. As opposed to what you're doing, stand comedy, is, is that it's in the moment, it's happening live. You can't be like, hold on, hold on, let me do that over again. Right. You know what I mean? Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me put a different filter on. Let me, let me figure this out real okay. quick. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's in. What's interesting is that I, I, I do think, I wonder sometimes, is that which people would continue pursuing a type of art if, if they had to go into a room and do it that way as opposed to curating an online persona and curating what you're doing and curating what people are seeing, right? So it's easier to paint a picture. You right. know, like, okay, here's this thing, here's this bit, as opposed to... Would you go to open mics and do that and come up doing that? Mm. Being in a room of people that don't give a shit? Like, right. would, you, would you still go home and want to do it? You know, or would you go in a room? Like, I remember going to open mics and no one listening. You know, but that, that it's like, okay, well, I got to figure this out. You know, okay, people listen to this. Okay, figure it out. But, it, but if I was just posting a video online, I'd be like, I would just, all I would see is the likes and not people turning their back to me. That makes sense. You get what I'm saying? I, I get what you're saying. You know, it's like, and I, I really do think that that, seeing people turn their back, seeing people get not engaged makes you perform better and actually makes you figure it out. Do you figure it out faster? I think you have to. Yeah. I think so. What also too is, that, I mean, that was the rush. That is yeah, the rush. It is. Like, I, I remember... What was weird is that one of my friends, I post, I have some videos on TikTok and I was like, oh, okay, you know, it works. Like that's pure, like that's, it works. That's what works. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I start posting a few videos on TikTok and it just felt so different and empty to me compared to because I came from when I would share something and it'd be live. So I have that frame of reference that, so I was trying to get that feeling from recording and it wasn't even mm-hmm. close you know, I'm in my room by myself, like setting the light up, <laughs> singing the song. Oh, then I go back and do it again, then do it again, again. And then you look through it, choose this. Choose, okay, I'll put that up. 
and then you wait. Yeah. You know, it, was, it just wasn't, it just wasn't, I didn't find myself, whereas opposed to, I remember when I first started to open mics, I couldn't wait to do the next one. Yeah. That's, Even if, that, that's how it feels now. Yes. So like I, I, I'm, we're changing our whole schedule, at least with the podcast, to, to have time for open mics, because you need it. Yeah. I figured out you you need it's, that environment to it's thrive, a to it's learn. The best. I loved it. That's I, I, I tell people too. It's like now, you know, because I started with open mics, I mean, these years, years, years ago. It's like when, when I first got into college, because I would have songs and it's like, well, I want to play them. So what can I do? You know, so I would start doing those. And what's interesting to me is like, that was the first time where I felt that rush. And I thought to myself, oh, man, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> Even if it went bad, I remember my hands shaking. I remember being so nervous. I remember my hands getting sweaty. I remember forgetting lyrics that I wrote. I remember, oh, shit, I don't know. Wh where does this chord go? And it's stuff. It, but the thing when you got done. It felt so good. You're like, oh, man. Yeah. It's like. Because, When's the next time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah really? Yeah. Because it just. It, there's something different about getting pushed over and being like, okay, here we go. You got to figure it out. You got five minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it over my, you got two songs, figure it out, do it. Yeah. And I, 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 I mean, that's what kept me going. And then when it gets into bands, it's the same thing, but it's like, it's different. It's really, I really do think that it was to me doing open mics by myself. Acoustic was much harder than playing a room sold out with people that like your music. You know what I mean? Nerve wise. It's a different yeah. kind of nervousness. Well, that too, and it's your confidence. Like you can't fake that. <laughs> no. You can't. I think you just you just in your comfortability, you have to go up there and make it seem like you're not uncomfortable. You have to memorize your material. Which uh, I think comes from doing it over and over. Because you Yeah. I mean, for me too, it's the same with stuff. It's like being comfortable on stage is just you just get comfortable by shit not working. Yeah. My microphone's going out, the guitar doing that. I've fallen on stage, tripped on stage. Dang. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Because, and it embarrasses you because you have this facade of, oh, look at this. I'm doing this so good. And then I tripped. <laughs> it's oh, like, shit. Oh, there went everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like all the, all the credibility build up. Even, even last night, it was, it was different because usually for the past month, month and a half, I've been on a stage with a big spotlight, totally different than just standing in front. Uh, standing at a, a restaurant with no stage, there's close to no uh, space on the ground to walk oh, you're around. When you're performing, when when you're perf when right. I'm performing, yeah, right. Yeah. Was it was totally different, a total different vibe. Because you you memorize your beats and you memorize your your uh, your material and and the different words and you're you're walking right. around. You have this rhythm that you're in. Last night wasn't like that. Like because it was, of why? Because environment changed. Because it was environment change. Were you on? You, so you were you on a stage? No. Uh, I'm used to doing it on a stage. Right. But last night was different because there was no stage. Right. I was trying to work out the set list that I'm going to do tonight mm -hmm. uh, to see how it's going to hit, and it was just it was different. Like I, those little nuances you have to remember. Which like makes wherever make you, whatever place you're at, they make you get better. Yeah. They really do. They really do. I think that's each environment. Each environmental change, like even if you're in a huge hall, mm -hmm. right? If you're in a big hall and there's echoing, like you have to get used to that. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Things sound bigger. Yeah. I, I think. Well, if you're a, if you're outside, totally different. Outside's hard. Is it? Even for music, I think it is. It, it's so. It's a thing to get used to. With no to. monitors, imagine you have no monitors. Think, it's just the sound going into the audience. And well, that's I think it. about that in the '60s. You know, '60s, '70s bands would play, and there was no monitors, so it was just going out. Wow. You know, and it's. I mean, they still sounded great. Shows you how good they were. <laughs> but what's interesting now is that it, even playing outside, because I'm. If you do festivals, you do have monitors, but if you're not using in ears. Which I don't like to use because I like to just it feels weird muffled. Mm -hmm. um, is that it, it? It things don't feel as powerful, you know. Because when you're in a in a in a hall, you feel that you hear the sound go out and come back, you know. So you think your oh yeah, it's bouncing yes, around. Yeah, and then when you get outside, all of a sudden the guitar is not. It's just going and it's gone. So you, you're like, wait, is that? 
didn't he turn up? It's like, no, that's how loud it was last night. It's like, well, it sounds like half that now. Right. You know, because it's, unless monitors do help and everything, but then even that changes. It doesn't seem, it's more intimate, I guess. And it yeah. feels more easier to maintain the energy. But these are all things that you learn over yeah. over time yeah. by doing it. Yeah. By doing it. Yeah. There's no way. There's no way. I mean, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no a, other way to no, to learn. No, not at all. Besides there's doing something. Over and over and over and yeah. over and over. And, over and over. you've been doing music for a long time, right? Yeah. Almost. Shit. So you you've had mm. yeah. good gigs. You've had bad gigs right yeah, yeah yeah but i mean same thing you know when you're first starting in a band you take any show you can yeah i remember playing the laundromat I remember playing <laughs> oh <it>. crap <laughs> yeah. really yeah and sarah's goes a laundromat called and the thing's called brainwash brainwash it was like a laundromat in a cafe that is uh, awesome uh i remember like you know playing uh you know basically it's like you know you're you, when you start, it's like you're doing things where you're not the main attraction. You're kind of in the room as well. Right. Right. Which makes you get better because it's like, how do you get the eyes on you? You know, as opposed to, okay, this is just a venue, you know, but it's, I mean, but also too, some of those ones are the most fun because I remember being with the band, you know, it's like those just. Is it this one? San Francisco? Yeah. Yeah. Never Greenwash Cafe it. Laundromat. Yeah. That's that it. That is awesome. I don't know if it's still open or not. Well, figure it no, out. Yeah, well. yeah, exactly. See? Ah. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's like we were set up like in the corner on the ground with like a PA, right? Yeah. And you just kind of go, but it makes you so much better. As this a, is what we need here. As an inst- as a performer, it makes you be, get better at, as, at, at what you play. Imagine doing your laundry and watching a band play. I'd want to do my laundry. That's what I'm often. saying. It was a cool concept. I'm surprised. It's, I'm glad it's still there. That's... Oh, it was cool. Yeah, stage see? right there too, and everything. <laughs> Where? Whoa. Right there. Yeah, I think like when we, I think when we did, there wasn't that. Oh, mm-hmm. a little piece right there. Oh my god. They've upgraded. Whoa, this we, is cool. We need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it was a cool idea. I mean, we liked. It. I mean, I, I, you know, but it's like what I'm saying is that you just take anything you can just because you want to do it. Yeah. Because yeah. honestly, even when you, when you start, it's like it feels. If I, I find that if you do enjoy it, it feels good. Regardless, no how, matter where if you're how, at, if how it goes, yeah, yeah. it does. Is yeah. it does for sure to this day? You know, if I don't sing, if I don't sing during the day or play myself when I write or anything like that, it's just like I get in a bad mood, like I get edgy, oh, I get okay. kind of weird. You know, I see and, that. you know, and then the next day, if I don't do it for another day or two days, or what is that? What do you think that is? Because I get that too. I don't know because there's a few times I have this tiny little uh, nylon guitar. And it got to the point where <laughs> I stopped traveling with it because it's kind of like I would take it all the time. But then my wife would be like, man, why are you bringing a guitar? Because if I play the guitar, what's funny is that everything else disappears, right? Uh, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm going to go over here and do my own thing for a little bit. It's like, but we're, on, we're together in this, you know? Yeah. It's like, okay. So now if it's only a few days, I won't take it. But I, I messed up one time. I was like five, six days. And I didn't take it with me. And then by like the third day, it's just like, even if it's not long, it's just something to, mm-hmm. you can become accustomed to doing. So it's like, you get, I got kind of just like bored, but then annoyed that I was bored. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause I was like, I could just be bored right here, but I could be playing guitar and like, yeah. you know, it's like, it's so easy. I could be bored and playing yeah, guitar. I could be just like thinking of doing something else while I'm doing that. So I stopped, but I don't know exactly what it is. And what's funny to me is I didn't realize it until my wife pointed it out to me. She's like, you need to go rehearse, go rehearse, get out of here. She's like, because you're just, you're just, you're doing way too much. Like you're just like <laughs> coming in too hot all the time, you know, it's like go. Yeah. And then it's, and then I come back and I'm just like, ah, really just much more relaxed. I wonder what it is, dude, because I, I get that same way. If we, if we, and the longest time that we've spent between publishing a podcast and and between the next was like eleven days, and those that period of eleven days was just like, oh my god, when is the next one? When when are we when are we scheduled? Uh, I mean, when yeah. I go on stage, yeah. I get a little bit of that because it's still uh, I'm still working out something. I'm still talking. I'm still trying to yeah. You know, th- I think, but I think I think that's the that's the word working. 
Yeah. You're working on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not being stagnant, you know, no matter what you, it, you're doing, you are, you, there is a possibility that you might discover something or learn something. Right. You know, that you didn't know the other, the, the other day with like, as far as, you know, performing or. And even throughout the day, like if there's a premise or like an idea, right. Take out my phone and write it down real quick. <laughs> Do that was do, always nice. Do you write it down or do you do voice memos? I I write it down. I I have to write every single any time that I get an idea, I have to write it down because I'm gonna forget. Of course, my brain is just it it, it runs too fast. When you, when you write it down, do you write it down as a joke or do you write it down as a topic? Topic. And so and then and then I I finesse it later. It, it could be the next day. It could be the same morning, uh, or. In a week, two weeks, I, I don't try to beat a dead horse. Like if I know that I have a good idea, uh -huh. I'll just leave it in my my morning pages and I'll come back to it like every couple of days. Do you ever, because I'm always curious with this, do you ever just write a joke and you just love it and then you come back to it and it's just not right? Oh, that's what the stage is for. <laughs> that's yes. <laughs> yeah, I I might think it's funny, right? Right. I go on stage, I say it, and people are like, "What the fuck is this it, guy's dude, problem?" I'm, like, what, I'm what's his... this? Is because it's when something it, is funny. It's it's sad. It's sad because I've had this stuff in my pocket for two years. Right. And and, and you take it out, and I take it out. Check and this it... out. <laughs> check this out. Everyone's all oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh, and that's why I say kill your darlings because you might have an idea and you're just stuck on this fucking idea thinking it's going to be the best thing in the world. But then yeah. you go out on stage and it doesn't hit and that's it. Kill yeah. your darlings. Yeah. Yeah. Get, kill get them. them out there. Get them out. But it's also the funny thing is too is that it's easier to live in the place without testing them because then they're great. Oh, yeah. No matter what, it's like, man, I have a book full of jokes, mm -hmm. so good. <laughs> but it's, you know, but then if you take them out, you're yeah. gonna find out, like, are they? Yeah, you know, it could be demoralizing too. It's like, oh my god, like, but none it, of that worked. At least for me, I, I have the attitude to where I do things and I want to get better each and every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Work at it. Work, 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 work. Right, right, right. And it happens. It needs to. I mean, it's. So right now, when you do a set, how, how long is the set? Right? Five minutes. Does it feel fast or does it feel slow? It feels very fast. Okay. That's what I was curious. Yeah. Because I feel the same thing, you know, when, you, when I first started playing or any time, even when there's like an hour set, it still goes by super fast. Yeah. No matter what. By the time you settle into it, it's almost over. Yeah. And I was curious with Colin, he's like, so you have five minutes. Well, I'm always wondering, like when they time comedians, where does that five minutes start? Right when you walk on stage, they start it? Yeah. At least from the places that I've done. So if you yeah. don't talk right away, your time's still going. I'm messing myself up right now is because I like to make a room joke, which means that only the people in the room will get. Like, And I based that on the environment. Like last night was right. First Amendment pizza, and I, I did a First Amendment pizza type of joke. Right, right, right. To pull off of like, to, the room. Yeah, to right. pull off the room. But I'm screwing myself up because it, ah, it, I'm using that right. minute uh, that I've never used before. Right, and you're taking out of your set. I'm taking out of my set. So Dude, does it, it help? What if you just go straight into it? I got to uh, that. We're gonna tr find out tonight. <laughs> But I get it. I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? You know, it's kind of like you walk out there and you want to kind of say, hey, how you doing? Like, kind of. Yeah, we're this. Warm we're, up, ease yeah. attention. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, that is true to walk out there because the, the set you're writing is works. You've written it independent of the room. Yes. Theoretically, right? And yeah. then when you walk into the room, you go, oh, I, I want to say this. Yeah. So wait, does the first, so if you write something, obviously, like last night, does that cater to your first joke of the set? No. Or does it work independently? It works independently. So you do a joke, then you got to start up. Then I got to start. <laughs> I'm killing myself. I'm killing <laughs> myself. I was going to say. Because it, it could be bad. Like last that's night. What I'm saying. Last night, I wrote it in like two minutes. And I was like, okay, like this is what I did. I, I went in, okay, First Amendment, okay, pizza, okay. Like we're at a comedy show, you know, it's got to make it funny. And it 
did not go well last night. It, it didn't because I kept on stumbling. I kept on stumbling over, and I had to bring out my phone because I. I oh, what no. was it? What did I say? I was like, "Oh, this is a First Amendment." Da 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 da. I blacked out. When I saw you put hey, out your phone and say black, I, I, you put, first amendment, hey, I was like, oh. Hey, your eyes rolled back. <laughs> yeah, I was like. Right. I'm going to go into my happy place. It was the survived trauma. Yeah. <laughs> Her body shut down. Right. But, I mean, that's that's what happened. Then. Wait, what do you mean? You read the, you, why did you pull out your phone? Because, so I pulled it out because I, I, <laughs> Wait. I wonder, like on stage, I was like, I wonder what, what's the... What's like? What's the First Amendment? I didn't even know. So you walked out there and you have five minutes. Out of five and minutes, you said, "What's the First Amendment?" Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know? Because we're, we're at the you, was, you... the pizza place was called First Amendment, and I was like, "Do, do we even know what the First Amendment right, is?" Right. And I read it, and I whatever the First Amendment is, and I was like, "Okay, so you mean to tell me somebody read the First Amendment and said?" I think I'm going to make a pizza place. I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it was just, it was dumb. Like, it, it was just like... But what was, I'm curious this, what was the allure of that? What do you mean? What was the allure of knowing that you want to do a joke about that as opposed to something that you know you worked on? Because I leave, I leave at least a minute for those room jokes. At least. That's part of what I do. It, I challenge myself a one minute so kind that of, way, I, I, I I'm it, always on my toes. Is that kind of like how, how some comedians, uh, what's that comedian, uh, the Greek guy, Starvos, online? Uh, oh, okay. I, I've seen some of his yeah, stuff. Yeah, he does a lot of crowd work. Yeah. Right? It's like, so that's, you want to build that up too. Yeah. But I think when you're at open mics, crowd work is not. Yeah, you, can't, the, you don't have you time. Can't, you don't have time. You don't have time for that. Well, so <laughs> last night is my first I'm not doing that. Not not yeah, not anymore. Well, I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I feel like if you're, if I you're, wasted time. Yeah, which means that you wasted time to test stuff you've actually written. Yeah, right. So it's like trial and error. You're kind of taking like, oh well. It'd it be, it just start. It just started like this that, month hey, where well, I started doing that, and that, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try this every be, place I go. That'd be the same as me writing a song, right, mm -hmm. for three weeks, bringing in you. <laughs> And saying like, hold on, I just thought about something in the car here. Let me play that for you. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, I have a song about yeah, this laundry oh, mat. Hey, you um, know what? Uh, hey, hey, I just, you know, I just experienced something on the fucking ten. Let me, let me write, <laughs> let me sing you a song about the ten. Yeah. You know, and, and you're just like. <laughs> meanwhile, I have this song I've crafted for like three weeks. You know, got every <laughs> lyric, every melody right. I'm like, hold on, real quick. I was on the way here. I was inspired by the ten. I'm going to sing that song for you real exactly. quick. Exactly. You live and learn, bro. <laughs> you live and learn. <laughs> I think tonight, I think you just go do your set. I'm just going, yeah. go in there and that's it. Yeah. See, yeah. see where it goes. See where it goes. Uh, but on that note, Octavio. Thank th you so much. Thanks bro. for coming out and doing yeah, the buddy. podcast, bro. I appreciate it. So go ahead and tell us where we can find you and what you got coming up. Yeah. Uh, Octavio F.G. It's on Instagram. It's on Spotify, it's on Deezer, all the same uh, tag. Uh, gonna have a new single coming out called Ride With Me. Uh, that's gonna be coming out, I believe, in the new year with a video and everything since we're already coming down to the end of it. But yeah, check it out online. Octavio FG, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Not Twitter, whatever it is now. X. Thank you so much, Gil. Oh, yeah, you got it, man. X it's X now. And so. then on your YouTube... Yeah, YouTube. Uh, if you just go into Google and write Octavio FG, it'll bring up everything. Go into web crawler and write it down. What's web crawler? <laughs> it's a whole nother podcast. Oh. No, web crawlers, oh man, data's on like Excite, web crawler, Yahoo, all these defunct Got it. Uh, search engines that no longer live. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you don't have to go to a web crawler. You can go down to the show description <laughs> on YouTube and Spotify. All the links that Octavio just talked about will be down in the show descriptions. Give him a follow. Check out his YouTube channel. Check out his new singles coming out. His music video is freaking phenomenal. It's going to be down here in the show description. Uh, check it out. And then uh, tonight, if you're not doing anything 8 p.m. or if you're doing something 8 p.m., you're going to like a... a a kid's thing for your kid, uh, 
just pull out your phone, uh, go to the link in the show description. Well, yeah, I'll put it in the show description. Check it out uh, tonight live at uh, Pig Studio in the city of Compton with our boys, the West Coast Pop Lock Podcast, and Jose for the Soy Funny Competition. And there you go. Just have fun. Hey, it's going to be cool. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to do this. I'm going to listen. Yeah. Type five. Top five. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just uh, remind me, dude. Yeah. Write, write me, be like, don't do a room joke. <laughs> don't talk about a podcast. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> uh, we all need reminders, but uh, yeah, for sure. This was awesome, man. Thank you, Gil. Appreciate so it, bud. The Same. mind bus. Boom. Bye. All right. Thanks for listening to the Mind Buzz podcast. Subscribe to the Mind Buzz YouTube channel and watch full podcast episodes. Keep up with the hosts, guests, and upcoming events by following the Mind Buzz on Instagram at the Mind Buzz. See you on the next one.